Hey folks, I'm Peter Melhorn. In this video, I'm gonna give you five tips on catfish bait for when you're fishing out there in the cold waters of winter. Well, folks, as cold temperatures start to roll around, uh, the bait scene starts to change a little bit in the catfish world. Uh, finding the traditional catfish baits that we catch in the rivers and lakes like skipjack, bluegill, shad, it changes a little bit. These falling water temperatures drive these bait fish into different locations and different places, and along with them go the fish. Now, depending on where you're at in the country, uh, whether you're in a colder climate a little bit further north or down in the southeast where it stays pretty warm, and depending on whether you're fishing a river or a lake, uh, there's a lot of variables that come into play. We can't go over all of those in this video, but we are gonna go over some things that you can keep in mind and you can try as temperatures get colder. Uh, and I think these things will apply to a lot of fishermen, pretty much anybody that's not having to fish through ice anywhere in the country. One of the first and the biggest challenges for most people uh, when it gets cold is actually catching bait. Uh, if you're throwing a cast net, uh, that means out there facing some tough cold condition, cold hands, uh, getting your clothes wet, getting you wet, uh, just usually not a lot of fun. Uh, depending on how cold it is, it can create a dangerous situation too on your boat, especially with the uh, water freezing on the deck, especially on the metal boats. Uh, it, this stuff can freeze quickly and become very dangerous. Catching other fish uh, like bluegill, uh, that can be tough too. Uh, those fish start to go really deep, usually around some structure. They're a lot tougher to catch. So we're gonna go over some options and some things to try to make that whole bait catching process a little bit easier. Now tip number one, my first pro tip is if possible, if possible, try to go catch bait in the afternoon. Now, not everybody is gonna be able to do this. Uh, and I understand that. Some folks have to travel a long distance to get to a place where they can pursue catfish and they don't have a lake or a river in close proximity to them to where they can catch fish. But if you are able to get out in the afternoon, generally speaking, catching bait is gonna be easier whether you're throwing a net for shad, whether you're trying to throw jigs for skipjack, uh, or even if you're trying to pick off some bluegill, sometimes in the winter time, uh, with temperatures warm up, especially in some clearer water with some light penetration, you can get some of these fish moving up a little bit shallower to feed. So uh, if you can get out there in the afternoon, uh, it, it's, it's a better option for you. Uh, schooling fish, where it's legal to use fish like white bass for catfish bait, like you can in Tennessee, or white perch, like we use here through a lot of the Carolinas, a lot of times these fish school up in the afternoon, up on points, and it can be a lot easier on you physically to be out there in some warmer temperatures, especially on a sunny day, if you can get out in the afternoon. Now, again, a lot of you guys can't do that. You're traveling a great distance and you need to be prepared and you need to either have bait or try to go catch it that morning. And uh, for those of us that are close to water, uh, that's, a, that's a good thing. That's the thing we're blessed with. But, uh, tip number two will be one that may help you if you are able to find that bait. Now, tip number two is something that I advise anybody that plans to do a lot of fishing in the winter, or at least a pretty good bit of fishing in the winter, uh, is get a home bait tank. Uh, for you guys that do have to drive a distance to find or catch bait, uh, it may be worth it to you to spend a day or a half day going and just catching bait, bringing it back home, loading up your home bait tank. A home bait tank first is easy to keep and maintain and operate in cold weather. Outside of it freezing, uh, you don't have the issues that you have in warmer weather. So if you don't currently have a home bait tank and have been thinking about doing it, winter time, cooler temperatures is a good time to try it out and go through the paces, see how it works, see about getting bait back. It's very easy to keep bait alive in colder temperatures. Uh, now, of course, when it gets super cold, uh, you do have to worry about a bait tank freezing because they will freeze up, especially if they're located outside like mine is. Uh, if you guys are able to put them inside of a garage or building, you're that much better off, your bait's gonna be fine. But uh, having that bait tank at home is a good thing. It's a good thing to start uh, and it will really help you out in the wintertime. 
And for you guys that have to make a run somewhere, uh, it's uh, a good time to load up your bait tank on your boat, get it back home and store the bait. There is nothing better than getting out on the water, uh, you know, first thing in the morning and already having bait ready to go, not having to catch it. Again, not everybody is able to get it the day before or keep it. Uh, sometimes it means going to a little local lake, a community pond, uh, maybe a municipal pond somewhere and catching some bluegill or something like that. But yeah, if you can get that home bait tank, it's a great tip for helping you out in the wintertime. All right, guys, pro tip number three, bigger baits early in the winter. Uh, you've heard me say before that bigger baits are a great way to eliminate smaller fish than they are. But historically, I've seen that early parts of the winter, late fall, early winter, uh, we're talking when water temperatures are still hanging in the 50s. These bigger baits seem to really work good for some reason. Uh, I don't know if the fish are feeding up, trying to stock up for winter. That's what we all like theorize and say to ourselves. Uh, maybe that's what it is. Maybe they're more aggressive in their feeding habits. But that fall period, uh, that time from like November all the way through until our water temperatures drop, start to drop into the 40s, I like using large baits. And what I mean by large, as big as you wanna put out there, really. Uh, depending on where your water temperatures are, you still have some flatheads feeding. They will still feed aggressively on these larger baits. In the water, the blues are still feeding, man. The blues are very tolerant of colder temperatures and they will hit those bigger baits. It's a great time to chunk those big ones out there. Don't worry about catching little fish. Just put out some big baits. And these bigger fish seem to key in on them when those water temperatures stay in that 50, low 60 degree range. It seems like a very good practice. I do it uh, where, you know, as we get into that November, December range, uh, that's a good time to try it. So try those bigger baits. Uh, you might put some big fish in the boat. Tip number four, pro tip number four is smaller baits. So you're going, wait, Dieter, you said bigger baits, not smaller baits. Well, the trick is here as it really starts to get cold, and I'm talking temperatures dropping into the 40s, sometimes up into the upper 30s. Uh, we get that shad kill going on then. Uh, those cold, cold temperatures, I've had really good luck downsizing baits. Generally speaking, we're not gonna get into flatheads that time of the year, we're gonna be catching blues, but uh, I, it's like these fish are not feeding aggressively, their metabolism has slowed down. They're not aggressively feeding, generally speaking, in these smaller pieces of cut bait seem to produce more fish, and I'm talking bigger fish. My personal best blue catfish came in December, the week between Christmas and New Year's. I was fishing on Sandy Cooper. It's a little over 70 pounds. Uh, I had a couple of big baits out that I was dragging, but this fish came on a very small piece about the size of my thumb. Uh, and most of the fish that I caught on that trip, I had several in the 30s and some in the 20s, I think every one of them except one came on smaller baits. I don't know why that is. Uh, again, I don't know if it's the cooler water temperatures have them less aggressive in their feeding, but it works. So if you get to that time period, temperatures are really cold, your catch rates have started to drop off like they do for everybody. Try downsizing a few of your rods. Uh, now if you're in an area where you're getting hammered, getting eat at my little fish, you may not want to do that but try downsizing the bait, at least on a few of the rods, you'll probably see that you'll get hooked up with more fish. Pro tip number five, and you ain't gonna hear this pro tip from anybody else. Uh, not everybody has the ability to go out and catch bait. Not everybody can throw a cast net. As a matter of fact, there's probably a lot of people that don't know how to catch skipjack. They don't know how to catch bluegill. They're just wanting to go fish some in the winter time. Uh, they may be new to catfishing. They want to do it. They're getting a little cabin fever at home. And all of a sudden, we've got a 65 degree day. It's kind of nice out here. I want to get out and go catch some fish. What do you do then? Do you go driving two hours to catch bait? Or are you going to go down and spend all your time trying to catch bait while uh, you're missing all the fishing time? Here's a suggestion. Try chicken. Okay, That's, uh, uh, don't hit stop. The reason I say this is not a pro tip you're gonna hear from anybody else because it flies in the face of what most pro cat fishermen, the big tournament guys are gonna tell you. Who would use chicken? You gotta use cut bait. Folks, I'm telling you, it catches fish. It produces fish. Uh, it may not be the ideal bait to win a tournament with. Uh, it may not be the, uh, the best 
I don't know, tough guy, big catfish, fisherman, bait. But if you don't have any options and you're torn between sitting at home and doing nothing or going fishing, go to the store, get you a pack of chicken breast, cut it up into some pieces the size of your thumb and go fishing. Uh, it will catch fish. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you've seen me using the strawberry jello on chicken, the chicken breast, the chunks of it. You can try that too, but you don't have to get that complicated. Chicken breast will catch you fish. So my point is, this winter, uh, when most people are stuck at home, not fishing, uh, wanting to get out and do some fishing, don't let bait stop you from going fishing. Uh, get out there. If you have to go buy some chicken to go do it, that's fine. If you can get out there and catch some bait and enjoy that time catching the bait, which I actually do, go do that. The bottom line is get out on the water, enjoy your time fishing, take your family, take your kids, make it easy, keep it simple, bend some rods, catch some fish, and have a good time. Well, folks, if you made it this far, thank you for watching. Here are a couple more videos that I think you're going to like. I'd watch that one and then that one. No, no do, do that one first and then that one. I, I don't know. Just watch them both. They're both good.